Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. I've got some big news for you guys. For the first time ever, Andrew and I are bringing the meetup games outside North America. We are going to the land that brought you Steve Irwin and Crocodile Dundee. That's right, we're going to London, England. We're going to Asper's Casino. Brad, those guys are in English. Ne neither of them? From the country that made it possible for the Revolutionary War, uh, presumably where Spraggy was conceived, we're going out to London, England. We're going to Asper's Casino, January 23rd through the 26th. It's a four day event, and it's probably gonna be the biggest one of 2020. So uh, if you're able to make it out, definitely do that. It's gonna be a ton of fun, and we're giving you a lot of, a lot of time to plan your trip out there. Uh, this video is awesome. I play the Chicago Charitable Games. I get into a lot of all-ins, big pots, there's bomb pots, ton of fun stuff going on. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Chicago. It's one of my absolute favorite cities in the world. Unfortunately, I only have one day to explore, but I make the most of it by going to as many places as I can. I go to the Bean, I get some Chicago-style pizza, I have a drink at the London House, then at night, I travel to the John Hancock Building. Unfortunately, I don't see Kanye West anywhere. The good news is that it's meetup game time. Hall of Fame mugger Brian Stafford picks us up. He takes us out to the event put on by Chicago Charitable Games, and the place is absolutely packed. Over 300 people come out to get some Bradley dollars. It's the most we've ever had. It's a 1-3 game with a $400 max. That's what I buy in for, then I take my seat. In the first interesting hand, we pick up Ace-5 of Diamonds in the small blind. It's nine-handed, $10 double board bomb pot. The first flop is Jack-10-7 with two hearts, so we've got nothing there. The second flop is Jack six deuce with two diamonds. We have the nut flush draw. I'm out of position and only have potential for one board, so I don't want to get overzealous. I check. The other eight opponents check. The second turns are the jack of hearts on top and the four diamonds right where we needed it to be. We have the stones. I bet 60. The big blind calls. The cutoff calls as well. Three of us are going to the rivers. The first one is the ten of diamonds and the second one is the six of hearts. I no longer have the nuts on the second board, but there isn't much reason to suspect that I'm up against a boat there, and unless I'm facing jack six, I'll be good on at least one board. I shove for about 255, thinking that if I get called by a player who's only strong on the bottom board, then I could scoop the entire pot. Another good outcome would be that I might be able to get a player with a flush on top, or a 10, to fold. That way, I can avoid a chopped pot. The big blind lets his hand go, cutoff folds, we scoop it, and the big blind lets us know that he folded the winner on the top board. Next we have pocket jacks, under the gun plus two, and a straddle pot. I raised to 20. The hijack calls, the big blind calls, the actions on the under the gun straddler. She came all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, and she did not come to fold. She ripped it in for 173 total. I'm on He's trying to make the vlogs. He's trying to make the vlogs. right through me. <laughs> I make the call. I can't imagine that there's anyone behind me that I want to call since they didn't 3-bet my initial raise. That thought proves to be wrong. The hijack folds, the big blind tanks, then he re-jams. I have 500 to start and he has me covered. Not sure what the hell is going on. There's so much money in the middle though. I call. There's a three-way all-in with a huge pot up for grabs. We all flip over our cards. The big blind has ace-king offsuit and the under-the-gun player is truly just trying to make the vlog with 7-4 offsuit. The flop is not a good one, it comes ace-9-6, the big blind has us in bad shape, we're drawing nearly dead, the turn is a 7, and the river is another ace, we lose to trips, I haven't been running too well lately, so this is a frustrating one, it's hard not to dwell on the fact that we could have easily avoided losing our entire stack if the under the gun player hadn't reopened the pot and jammed with 7-4 offsuit. Things just aren't quite going our way lately. We rebuy, then we pick up ace-jack suited in middle position, under the gun plus 1 opens at 12. I call, the button calls, three of us see the flop, it's jack, four, deuce, rainbow, we've got top, top. Under the gun plus one continues for 30, this is the same opponent that jammed with 7-4 offsuit earlier. I make the call, the button folds, we're heads up, the turn is another four, under the gun plus one checks, I have such a strong hand, but I'm somewhat concerned that the opponent is pot controlling, so I make a small bet of 50. The opponent calls, the river is a three, under the gun plus one checks, I sense something may be up, I check back, it ends up being a good check as the player rolls over pocket kings. She's got the winner. Despite being crushed, it's tough to be down when you're looking at a smile that big. I switch tables and my first hand in the seat, I look down at pocket kings in the hijack. It's my turn to make some money with cowboys. Under the gun plus one opens to 15, I three bet to 50. Under the gun plus one calls, we're heads up. Flop is 976 with two diamonds, the player checks. The flop isn't ideal, but there are plenty of hands that we're beating that we can get value out of or need to deny equity to. I bet 60. 
the opponent calls. The turn is another seven. This is actually a good card for us. There shouldn't be any sevens in the opponent's range other than potentially pocket sevens. This card reduced the likelihood that we'd be up against that. Surprisingly, the player leads for 175. I only have 250 total. I'm still beating hands like queens, jacks, tens, and a few other holdings. There's no sense in calling and leaving myself with $75, so I reluctantly jam and I get called quickly. Sure, you got it. We lose a painful one to 8 7 offsuit and we're down big right away. Been playing for about two hours, can't win a hand, stuck $800 in a $400 cap uh, 1 3 game. So it's going to be real tough to get out of the hole. Not really a ton I can do, I don't think. But uh, let me try and get it back. In this hand, we have queen jack suited, under the gun plus two, under the gun limps in, I raise to 16. The hijack calls, and the under the gun player calls, we go three ways to the flop. It's jack jack five, we've got trips, under the gun checks. I'm not a fan of slow playing because most of the time, people's biggest problem in low stakes games is that they call too much. I bet 20. The hijack shoves for about 123 total, under the gun folds, I'm going nowhere, I call. The turn is a four, the river is a six. The opponent shows that he ripped it in with ace five offsuit, he was drawing very slim. We're happy to win one, but we still have a long way to go to get unstuck. Later, we have jack 10 of hearts in the cutoff. It's a straddle pot, under the gun plus one limps in, under the gun plus two calls, I raised to 30. Small blind calls, two limpers call, we're going four ways to the flop. It's queen nine six with two hearts, we've got the world. The opponents all check, there's so many great cards we could hit, so I bet 70 in position as a semi-bluff. The other players all fold. All of a sudden, we can win again, and we're feeling hopeful. Here we're dealt ace-deuce offsuit in middle position. It's a $10 double board bomb pot. The first flop is ace-nine-deuce rainbow. We've got top and bottom pair. The second flop is four-three-deuce with two hearts. We have bottom pair and a gut shot straight draw. Checks to me, I bet 60. The cutoff calls. Under the gun plus one calls as well. Three of us are going to the turn. The top one is a king. The bottom one is another four. Under the gun plus one checks. There are lots of bad rivers that could come out on both boards, so I don't want to let anyone get there for free. We bet 200. Cutoff jams for 535. Under the gun plus one folds. I've got a tough decision. It's hard for me to be beat on both boards unless I'm up against something like aces, kings, or nines. It's only a little over 300 more. I call. We're heads up. The first river is a seven. The second river is a king. Player turns over 6-4 offsuit. He has nothing on the top board. We win that one. On the bottom board, he has trip fours, which is good enough to win it. If I were him, I probably would have folded to the flop bet since there are so many other players in the hand at that point. It's incredibly difficult to win the pot outright. You really only have a medium strength hand at best on a single board, and he could be drawing nearly dead to a hand like 6-5 or ace-5. Plus, there are so many other holdings that have 6-4 offsuit in bad shape. Still, he drills the turn, and we chop it up. I don't really like chopping double board bomb pots, so we should play another one. This time I've got ace four offsuit, and the first flop is ace king nine rainbow. We have top pair. The second board is queen five three with two clubs. We have the wheel draw and an overcard. Checks to me, I bet 60. Cutoff calls, small blind considers his options, then he raises to 175. The action's on me. I could go either way. I think I have enough equity to stick around, although it'd be a nightmare for me if I'm up against a hand like ace jack of clubs. Ultimately, I rip it in, I have both opponents covered, cutoff goes deep into the tank, he's in agony and doesn't know what to do. He doesn't make it a block no matter what, right? <laughs> That's <it's> true. <laughs> Can I get on there too? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Just blur him out. <laughs> cutoff finally comes to a decision, he folds, which I'm not too upset about. Small blind makes the call for about 400 total. I hope that I'm good on one board at least. The opponent turns over pocket fives for a set on the bottom board. Glad to see that I'm winning on one. Another opponent says that he pulled with king five, so the small blind can't hit another set. And he's drawing dead on the top board. I'm guaranteed to at least chop, and I'm free rolling to win the entire pot. The top turn is a queen. The bottom turn is an eight. The rivers come. The first one is a jack. The second one isn't too bad. It's a deuce, and we make a straight. Oh, oh. Stupid. Oh, oh man. That's 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 the mud we get some good luck there. Dealer pushes us a big pot. We get all the way out of an $800 hole in a 1-3 game. We're actually winning a little bit. The opponent got a bad river, but he's got a great attitude, and I was impressed with how he handled it. Here with Jeffrey, he, uh, he got it all in good with a set of fives. 
Yeah. I'll knock him out. I'll, I'll, I'll get there. He took it like a champion. Yeah. <laughs> For cool, sure, man. man. I'll sign with you. Yeah. The night has turned around and it's only getting better. Jamin Burton's in the house. A guy named Derek gave me a navy coin. I've got pocket jacks in the big blind. Under the gun plus one opens at 12. Small blind three bets to 35. I'm facing people that should have lots of strong holdings in their ranges, so I'm not going to four bet this. I call for 32 more. Under the gun plus one calls. We go three ways to the flop. The dealer puts out 997 with two spades. Small blind checks. Probably wouldn't do that with a hand better than jacks. My hand is vulnerable, so I don't want to see any other cards, especially facing two opponents. I bet 100. Under the gun plus one calls. Small blind folds. Or heads up. I'm going to play this cautiously now. The turn is the five of diamonds. I check. Under the gun plus one checks back. I feel like I have him beat. He most likely would have four bet with aces or kings pre-flop. Probably would have bet a pair of queens on the turn after I checked. Seems like he has either spades, pocket tens, pocket eights, or some other hand that I'm beating. The river is the deuce of hearts. Shouldn't have changed anything. I'm gonna bet for value. I put out 200. The player announces a call. I turn over the jacks. They're no good. The player has nine eight of hearts. He flopped trips. I wasn't expecting to see that at all based on how the hand played. We lose this pot and we're back to even on the night. After brushing that off, we're dealt King-10 suited under the gun plus one in a straddle pot. A few players are missing from the table, so we don't have to get through quite as many opponents. I open to 20. Small blind calls, the big blind calls, under the gun calls as well. Four of us are seeing the flop. It's queen jack six with two diamonds. We've got a royal flush draw. The opponents check to me. I put 60 out there. Small blind folds, the big blind calls, under the gun folds, we're heads up. The turn is the deuce of spades. No help for us. The opponent checks. I'm going to continue to play this aggressively. I bet 135. There are two good outcomes. The big blind can fold and we can win right away, or we can call and we can drill something. The big blind lets it go. We win, but it's still fun to rabbit hunt and see what the river would have been. It's the ace of diamonds. We would have made a royal flush. Either way, we win the pot. In the last hand we'll go over, we have ace king suited in the small blind. Three players limp in for $3. I raise it up to 25. No one likes folding against me. They all call. Four of us to go into the flop. It's 8-5-4 with two spades. We have the nut flush draw with two overs and a backdoor straight draw. The issue is that we're up against several limpers, so this flop is generally going to be better for their ranges than it is for mine. For that reason, I could go either way when it comes to checking or betting. I typically lean towards being more aggressive. And this is about the best hand that I'll have in this situation, giving all of its potential, so I bet 85. Can't even get past the first player. It's under the gun plus one, raises to 285. He only has 63 behind, folds to me. This is an odd situation with the stack sizes. We're not doing great against sets, but we're doing just fine against draws, one pair hands. We go ahead and gamble. I put it all in. The opponent makes the call. I turn over my cards. He turns over eight, five of diamonds. He flopped top two pair. Let's see if we can work some magic. Nope. We're drawing dead on the turn. It's another eight. The river is a king, but it doesn't matter. We lose that one, then a little bit more. Booking a loss before we rack up for the night. That's it from uh, Chicago Charitable Games. We had 22 tables tonight. I'm pretty sure that ties the record. Uh, I lost 260, but I was down 800 to start pretty much. So I will, I will take it. Uh, played a few frustrating hands, sucked out with the ace dudes to scoop that pot against the uh, uh, set of fives on the double board bomb pot. So that was cool. Um, kind of a roller coaster session, but uh, happy to not get crushed too badly. And now it's time to have some drinks. A huge group of people sticks around to grab drinks and keep the party going after the poker's over. It's always one of my favorite parts of the night. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Also, be sure to hit the notification bell. That way you're notified anytime I put out a new video. Uh, I want to give a huge thanks to the Chicago Charitable Games. Those guys are awesome. They helped set up the biggest event that we've ever put on and it went uh, pretty flawlessly. So thanks to everybody who came out as well. I'll have a link down below in the description box to the Chicago Charitable Games website. That way if you're in the area, you can see when and where their next events are going to be. Um, uh, I talked to my mom the other day and uh, she told me that I should downplay my losses a little bit because the vlogs are starting to get a little bit depressing uh, talking about these downswings and everything. But I'm happy to tell you, I'm coming out of the downswing. Things are going well. I've got some vlogs that are coming out that I'm really excited to share with you. Um, but the, the videos haven't quite caught up to my real life yet. So uh, just, just 
bear with me, good things are coming. Um, the next meetup games are gonna be October 2nd and 3rd at the Texas Card House in Houston. If you're in the area, come hang out, have some drinks with Andrew and me. And uh, after that, we're gonna be going to Hollywood Park Casino in the LA area, and then we're gonna be going to Running Up Reno all in October. So uh, a lot of fun things going on. If you want a, a full list of all the places that we'll be going um, through January, then check out our Facebook page. I believe it's facebook.com slash poker mugs or something. I'll have a link down below in the description box, but yeah, we've got a lot of trips uh, coming up and we might be coming um, somewhere near you. So be sure to check that out. Hope you guys are all doing well. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.